Today, we'll be talking about setting the stage for responsible AI development in Africa, the role of higher education. I'm Caitlin Corgan. I'm the executive director of the Institute for Ethics and Artificial Intelligence and happy to be a part of this project we've been working on for over a year now. So I'm just going to say a few words on it, then I'll, I'll pass it over to our other panelists. This started out of a um, the first thing we kind of did in this area was a workshop we actually did online with the Responsible AI Network Africa and our partners at uh, the GIZ Fair Forward program, Artificial Intelligence for All. And in September 2020, we put together a, a panel to talk about uh, integrating AI ethics in a higher education curricula in Africa. Um, and from this, uh, the conversation was so interesting. We thought, why don't we keep going with this? Um, this is a topic that, that needs more discussion. So we decided to put together um, an edited volume on the topic called AI Ethics and Higher Education Insights from Africa and Beyond. Um, and it was a, a collaboration between the Technical University of Munich and our wonderful strategic partners at KNUST in Ghana. Um, and as well as uh, some support from Fair Forward and our Fair Forward members here today, Philip and Huku. Um, the edited volume tackles the challenge of integrating concerns related to AI ethics into higher education curriculums in Africa and beyond. For doing so, it analyzes the present and future states of AI ethics education in African computer science and engineering programs and how we can, um, what are the hurdles to that? What are the challenges? What are some great examples and best practices in that? Um, and to do that, we have a, kind of a four section book we've set up uh, to hopefully uh, be coming out in 2022 um, with an introductory section, which uh, we'll have Philip talking about later. Um, and then a section on theoretical underpinnings of AI ethics in practice, particularly as a reply applies to the region of Africa. Do we need to think about ethics differently, convert some of the frameworks that have largely been developed in the West to, to the context that they're sitting in and the students that will be learning them um, is some of the things that section encompasses. Then we have our largest section on the present state, best practices and challenges in AI ethics and education, um, uh, which will have a sample chapter from Leticia to talk about a little bit there. And then finally, thinking about the future and what is the visions for responsible AI developers in the African context. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to our panelists. Uh, we have Jerry Poyo from KNUST in Ghana, who will give us just an overview of, of the topic as well. And then Philip from Fair Forward will give us uh, his thoughts from the chapter him and uh, Kuku have worked on the need for AI ethics in higher education. Latisha from University of Port Harcourt in Nigeria will talk about uh, her chapter on higher education curricula in West Africa, given the Nigerian university experience. And Deborah from the Academic City University College in Ghana uh, will talk about their chapter on AI ethics education for future African leaders. So with that, I will hand it over to Jerry to say a few words. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Caitlin. and. Uh... Uh, thank you and uh, good morning to our panelists. Um, what I want to say with reference to the discussion that we are having is that artificial intelligence currently is the way to go as far as the fourth industrial revolution is concerned. And there has been a lot of talk about the need to integrate AI into our curriculum as far as uh, tertiary institutions and the educational setting is concerned. But as you look at it, you realize that within the African context especially, we do not have a lot of material to rely on as far as uh, those of us in academia is concerned. And so it becomes necessary that uh, a project like this uh, is, is, is initiated so that the outcome of it becomes a very good resource as far as interacting with students within the broader context of artificial intelligence is concerned. For somebody who is coming from an academic environment, I appreciate the fact that indeed AI is a powerful tool, but it is important that we look at it within the context of using artificial intelligence for good, ensuring that we are using it for the benefit of humanity. And that is the reason why it's important that 
there is guidance as far as how AI is used is concerned. I have looked at the various chapters as has been represented in the book. And I realized that indeed, it is a very good resource because in one chapter, we are looking at uh, AI uh, ethics as it applies to other jurisdictions and then trying to see how that can be incorporated within the African environment. You realize that indeed it is important that you look at the cultural background within which you are integrating AI ethics. So we actually within the book also have a chap chapter that actually looks at uh, the, the, the cultural background and the nuances that go with it as far as integrating ethics within the curriculum is concerned. There are major issues when it comes to introducing new topics or introducing new courses within the broader conversation of uh, academic environments. And for which reason, in one of the chapters, we have looked at what are the experiences as far as integrating artificial intelligence within the curriculum is concerned. What are the blocks? What are the challenges? And how do we go around it? 13 universities within Nigeria have been considered. And we have looked at how do we integrate this within uh, uh, our curriculum? I am thinking that uh, this particular work which has been done is the way to go. And when it is completed, as I said initially, it is going to be a wealth of resource as far as incorporating ethics in AI within academic environment is concerned. I am thinking that it shouldn't be limited to just the academic environment because there are practical uses of AI and then the ethical uses uh, within the industrial setting and all that, which have also been captured. And I am thinking that beyond academic environments, practitioners in industry, practitioners in government and the private sector will also find it as a huge resource. And so by way of summary, that is my perception as far as the project of this book is concerned. Over to you, Kathleen. Thanks, Jerry, for, for giving us that kind of overview of the motivation and the contents of the book. I'll pass it now to uh, Philip and, uh, you know, Kuku, you're welcome to chime in too, since you guys have been working on this section together um, to give us a, a look into how, what they've been working on in the book. Great. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Yeah, as you already said, um, Kuku and I, we are advisors for the GIZ project, Fair Forward Artificial Intelligence for All. And really, in a nutshell, our overall goal is to democratize the development and use of artificial intelligence. And that's why we're really happy that this book is, um, well, hopefully being published then next year. And why we think this is necessary is because I think what we have seen in the past, well, at least five, maybe even more years is that the topic of AI ethics is um, really on the agenda of high politics. So we have the G20 that have agreed on joint principles on the um, ethical development of AI that include transparency and human rights and accountability, etc. You have the G7 that have started the Global Partnership on AI, which is a well more inclusive venue for governments to debate how AI can benefit humanity in a responsible way. And I'm sure Many of you have seen the news last month that the UNESCO has concluded a long deliberation process across the globe for the um, that took place uh, the past two years to formulate truly global recommendations on ethical AI. And we as a project, as Fair Forward, we are also a participant to this debate. And I think it's important that the Smart Africa Alliance an organization of more than 30 African states have now concluded what they call an AI blueprint for Africa. And in this blueprint, which was championed by the government of South Africa, the Smart Africa Alliance points out really concrete recommendations on how to create policies for strong and ethical AI across Africa. And here, I guess we're coming closer to why our debate here and this book is so necessary because we really need to translate AI ethics into practice. And from my perspective, there are two straightforward ways to go about it. And um, yeah, you probably have to pursue both in parallel. 
So on the one hand, you need to start the discussion with the current AI practitioners. So when we say ethics are built into AI applications, and I'm sure this has been said a couple of times now during the conference already that ethics are built into the AI applications. Well, then we need to talk to the builders of AI. And from, we from Fair Forward, we have done so in India, for example, where we have created a handbook on data protection and privacy for developers of artificial intelligence. And this handbook is the result of a multi-stakeholder process, which included AI practitioners, regulators and policymakers. And it includes now really concrete guidelines for the responsible development of artificial intelligence. So it tries to translate principles such as transparency and privacy and accountability into actionable items uh, so that developers can go through a checklist during the development process to preempt certain problems that we are already aware of. And the second way would be to not address the current AI practitioner, practitioners, but the future AI practitioners. And that this is, I guess, where the books co book comes in and um, that all the panelists here are involved in. So it's the students at your universities that are the future developers of uh, artificial intelligence. And the book integrates different concerns and questions related to AI ethics um, with regards to higher education curriculums. And this way we try to well, create a collection of diverse, especially African, but also European perspective on the topic of responsible AI, where the authors will share their concrete experience on what is working in the classroom, and in doing so also reflect on the practical implement, uh, implications of the different theoretical approaches that are out there when it comes to AI ethics. Um, and yeah, what it really tries to do, I think, is to offer useful starting points for educators, but also administrators and students in the field. Great, thanks, Philip. I think I have a few things uh, we can come back to uh, when after when our discussion later from that. Um, next, I want to move over to Latisha to talk about uh, her experience in Nigeria um, that she talks about in her book chapter. Okay, thank you very much, Kathleen. I would like to share my slide just to explain what I surely did. So I hope you can hear me. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you and very much. And now we happy see to be our slides. Yep. Happy to be here with you. So I'm actually talking on the challenges of uh, integrating AI ethics into higher education curriculum in West Africa, the Nigerian University narrative is where I'm actually going to concentrate on. So we've already said much about uh, creating responsible AI. And the question now is how do we not set the stage for responsible AI development in Africa? We all know that AI is making work easier for mankind and as such, there is also need for us to look at the associated risk involved in it. And how do we do that? We need to look at the, the policies that must, be, uh, that must be put in place. And also there's also need for us to look at, to, for, for, for us to, to make sure that these policies are actually being followed and also being implemented. It's not enough to uh, uh, put down policies that will not be implemented. So even if these policies have been put in place, there's need for us to make sure that the policies are being implemented. The question now is why AI ethics in higher education curriculum? Why should we integrate AI, sorry, ethics into AI in a higher education curriculum? You agree with me that teaching ethics in AI class is important since AI technologies and the applications raise a lot of issues. And as such, students should be taught the main thing that they need to understand. They need to, taught, they need to be taught the risks that are associated with these AI technologies and the possible solutions to the ethical problems that these AI technologies can also cause. So this calls for the need for AI, for ethics to be integrated into AI in our higher institutions in Africa. Then here in Nigeria currently, because that is what my case study, I looked at uh, Nigerian universities. I was able to, uh, to do a survey on Nigerian universities and other African countries apart from West Africa. 
In Nigeria, in the University of Portacot, we actually work. We have AI as a course, but we do not have AI ethics. So AI ethics is not actually a course in either computer science, engineering, or information technology in, in the Nigerian universities. All we have is AI GIMAS. That's the minimum benchmark academic standard. That is what, what we have in the Nigerian universities. The University of Portacot, AI is not also a standalone program, but it is a core course for those in computer science and, and uh, statistics, electro electronic engineering, so that's the undergraduate students. So it is actually a core course, but it is not a program. So we are looking at making AI a program, not just a course that you come and teach within the semesters. So the same thing applies to our MSc and PhD students. We do these courses as a core course, but not as a program. So we found out that integrating AI ethics into the West African University curriculum will help to examine the most of the pressing needs that comes with this AI or that, that are related to AI. I did some survey in Africa, some African universities. I was able to carry out a survey to find out what is actually happening in these universities. You can see from my slide, I was able to look at some universities to find out if they're actually teaching AI ethics, if AI ethics is part of what they teach as their curriculum. So during that, uh, during my survey, I discovered that most universities, both in Nigeria, where I, where I, where I, where I work, and other African countries, do not have, do not teach AI ethics. All they teach is just AI, but not AI ethics. So I also did the survey. If you look at the second slide here, you can see that I did some survey in Cameroon, Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, South Africa. The only country that actually takes care of AI or teach AI ethics is South Africa. Then Kenya is also part of it. But most universities don't even know what AI ethics is all about. What the, the, the survey I got, the information I got from the survey is that they only teach AI as a course, but not AI ethics. Then from my phone, from my you can also see the reports of the number of people that actually do AI research. The number of people that actually that are actually involved in AI research. From the first, from the first graph, you can see that 91%, 91.7%. Of people in, 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 in higher institutions are not involved in AI ethics research, actually, AI ethics, not AI. They're involved in AI, but not AI ethics. Then just about 8.3 institutions are actually into AI ethics. Then we also went further to look at the institutions that offer AI ethics as a course, just like I, I stated when I started. We discovered that most universities in Africa are not taking. AI ethics, that they don't teach AI ethics, but instead they teach AI as a course, but not AI ethics. So you can, from my graph, you can see during my survey, that said about 88.5% about 88, 88 of these high institutions do not teach AI ethics as a course or a program, but 11.5% take it as a course. And you can see that the, the, the percentage is quite small, unlike what we have in other developed countries. They also looked at the use of AI ethics guidelines and the framework. We discovered, I discovered that during my survey, I discovered that 83.3% of these users actually use it, that teach AI ethics using the guidelines and the framework. But 16.7% do not use the AI ethics guidelines or the framework to develop AI ethics systems or models. Then what are the challenges? of integrating AI ethics in higher education in curriculum in Africa. Why Africa? Because I also looked at other African countries, not just West Africa alone. We discovered that there are a lot of challenges involved in this. If I look at my, my, my graph, I was able to look at the process that is involved, the challenges, the recommendations, and the solutions. Here in Nigeria, NUC, which is the National University Commission, is actually a body that oversees the what is happening in higher institutions. So they are the body that regulates what actually takes place in our higher institutions in Nigeria. So you can see that in Nigeria, accreditation is normally done every five years. And of course, it's normally done in higher institutions. And there are a lot of processes that are involved in doing that. These challenges of integrating AI ethics into our curriculum. Number one, we have some challenges. 
First of all, the same NUC BMAS is being used by all higher institutions. Then secondly, lack of AI ethics programs is another major, uh, major challenge because there's need for AI ethics to be mounted as a program or a department and not just to integrate it as a course when we're aware that AI is being taught. It should be mounted as a program. They're not uh, clear, we don't have clearly defined mandatory requirements enforcing AI ethics in, in, integrating, in, 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 in integrating it into the curriculum. We also have lack of functional AI laboratories. We don't have functional AI laboratories, which is also a challenge because these things are needed to actually carry out the practicals that are involved in AI. But we don't have these things because I did a lot of survey in, in Nigeria universities. We don't have AI laboratories, just very few. The few you see are from private organizations and not from the institutions. The lack of enough expertise in this area because you know it's a new area, so we don't have enough experts to take care of this. Then what are, what are the recommendations? I recommend that DAP, which is the, uh, the, the Director of Academic Planning here in Nigeria, should make a recommendation to NUC on the need to review the, the, the curriculum or, the, or also the need to integrate um, ethics into AI in our BMAS. But that is not enough. The main solution to the issue is, first of all, making sure that NUC tries to integrate AI ethics into the BMAS, that's the BMAS uh, curriculum. Then two, another, another solution to this challenge is to also make sure that standalone AI ethics programs are also being made mandatory for all higher institutions by NUC, because NUC has a great role to play in this area. Then all, well, there's also need for AI ethics awareness to be created in all higher institutions, focusing on technology, governance, and legal, legal, legal aspects. Then the first solution, centers of excellence for AI should also be established because in, in, in West of Portacourt where I work, there are some centers of excellence that have been established. There's also need to, for us to establish a center of excellence for AI ethics. The ethical guidelines should be developed as part of the curriculum for AI ethics because these guidelines must be followed to make sure that they are, they, the implementation of AI ethics is actually that the AI ethics is actually being implemented. So the guidelines will also help to make sure that it is being implemented. I'm not just saying it, but there's need for us to, to for there's need for the guideline to enable it to be implemented. Then training of staff, there's also need for us to train staff from, from, from the slide I shared. You can see that most. Most universities have just very few people that are into AI or AI ethics, very few. And that is because we don't have enough trained personnel or experts to manage this field, which of course we are going to do say it's a new field in Africa. The other thing is to also organize conferences. There's need to organize conferences to, and webinars to create awareness. Because if you don't create the awareness, people may not read. So universities in, in Africa, we don't even know what we are talking about. So there's need to create awareness through conferences through webinars, through collaboration between universities, both in Africa and beyond. Then as, as a matter of fact, I'm also trying to see if I can, uh, the, if I can um, the, set up a conference. That's what trying to, we are planning for a conference in Nigeria with it by next year, towards the end of next year, so that AI ethics awareness can be created. So that is one of my programs. That's what I'm planning for, to see how this thing can be, how we can, uh, how we can set up a conference in Nigeria. Of course, I know that I need fun to do that, but that is my target for next year. By November, December next year, I'm planning for a conference in Nigeria to be held in, in Nigeria, the University of Port Harcourt, so that we can create more awareness and also collaborate with other African countries. So solutions to, so to I've already talked about the solutions and the roles of and the role of NUC, the role that they will play to make sure that their ethics is actually integrated into university high institutions or university uh, curriculum both in Nigeria, in West Africa, and in Africa in general. So in conclusion, promoting responsible AI innovation actually calls for us to do what? To create an AI program, AI ethics program, or stand alone program. It is from there that we'll be able to make sure that AI ethics, that, that the responsible AI is being developed. Because if we don't have the program, then we cannot develop responsible AI systems. So responsible AI network is also 
it's also, it's also important for us to encourage it in Africa. Let's do it for us to encourage AI network in Africa. So integrating AI ethics into Africa's uh, into, uh, uh, higher education is actually important to enable us to build AI technologies that, that we can use to design responsible systems. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Leticia. I also have a lot of points I want to get back to um, when we move into the discussion. But first, I want to hand it over to uh, Deborah for a few minutes to tell us about um, what she's been working on related to the topic. OK, all right. Thanks so much. And um, good morning to everyone. And um, thanks so much to all the panelists for sharing their viewpoints on this. Um, so um, picking up just from where um, Leticia already ended with regards to how AI has had positive impacts in various industries, um, we can talk about um, how AI has been applied to agricultural finance. I mean, its impact is really numerous. And um, as we begin to look at more ways in which we can apply this to, to different areas, it's important that we also look at the ethical implications of these systems that we are developing. And as such, um, whilst looking at the uh, um, the ethical implications of these systems, we need to focus more on our future uh, um, um, leaders. That's the current youth. How are we instilling in them to understand or when we are building systems that is necessary to include their ethical foundation and then equip them with the right tools and um, skills that they, are need, that they need to be able to build these systems so as not to fail or that will be able to serve humanity's ethical principles and values. And um, so our chapter in particular um, focus on, um, first of all, looking at what, where are we actually when it comes to the state of teaching AI ethics and um, um, what are also some of the best approaches that we can use to teach AI ethics to future developers. And then also looking at where do we actually have to be as a continent, as an African continent, where do we have to be with regards to achieving responsible AI, um, its development and then its use. So beginning basically when we look at ethics as itself, ethics is, um, more like a Greek a Greek word that uh, means ethos, um, which actually can mean custom, habit, or character. And as such, when you look at this and looking at the African context, um, ethics in itself would always depend on the, the context in which you're looking at it. And coming to Africa in particular, we cannot even define ethics as a self without um, bringing in religion because um, religion is something that is very dear to the African continent. And um, it plays a very huge role in um, um, determining what is ethical and what is not. And so when it comes to AI ethics in itself, um, the religious community would begin asking questions like, how far should AI actually should, should be allowed to go? How are we, we are creating systems that we assume are going to mimic humans' brains, the ability to think and all of that. And um, that's more like we're trying to challenge the belief that we as humans have the power to um, create an entity that can think like a human. So more like we are challenging God. And so the big question here remains, is it, actually ethical to encourage the building of human-like machines. And so in assessing the state of teaching AI ethics, we looked at, um, we noticed that a number of countries um, in, the Afri in Africa are actually championing the cause of introducing AI in itself um, or teaching, or teaching um, youth what AI is about, as uh, mentioned by Leticia in her, in her work. And um, there've been a few um, hubs that have been set up. Um, talk about Google that has also already set up its office um, in, in Ghana. And um, University of Lagos as well also, also launched um, their first um, AI hub. And um, Academic City University, where I actually lecture also introduced their bachelor's degree program in artificial intelligence. And so, I mean, all of these things have been put up, but not really focused on ethics in itself. And um, despite the efforts that the people are putting in to teach people um, how or to build AI systems, there's still a very huge gap between um, 
AI development in Africa and then the rest of the world at large. And so we looked at um, this um, AI readiness report in 2020, and I'll just share my screen to show um, just some few of those countries. So um, we looked at USA and then some other African countries, like seven African countries. And um, we noticed that their rank, this is just the top um, 100 and only seven African countries were included in this report. So I'm um, sorry, in the top 100. And um, looking at this, we noticed uh, Mauritius actually was 45th. And uh, particularly our interest is on this governance and ethics. So there were different indicators that were used to actually set up um, this particular um, index. And with governance and ethics, which Mauritius actually has the best, which is in Africa, is 58.34. And let's think about comparing this index to that of um, the USA. There's really a huge gap. So that tells us that we are even the best country or the best country that had a good um, um, index still stands far apart to a country like um, the USA, which indicates how important it is that we um, begin to um, look at or focus on ethics as itself. So um, what then could be some of the best approaches that we can adopt in teaching AI ethics? So we looked at more like a transfer learning approach. So we're looking at approaches like a developmental approach. So more like looking at the um, um, helping to grow the mindset of um, the learners. So it could be through seminars, discussions, allow them just to grow them their mindset through um, uh, um, a development process. We also thought about the apprenticeship approach. And uh, in this case, we are more looking at challenging the learners. So instead of just teaching them, pick this data set, clean it and build models that can do various things, once you have access to the data set, you should be able to think about what is the ethical process that is involved in building, let's say, a credit scoring model. You need to be able, they, they, they need to go through that uh, um, real environment, more like an internship, but putting it ethics into consideration as well. We also looked at as an approach like the social reform perspective, which also aims at um, ch social change. So some of the activities we mentioned could involve teaching uh, or bringing learners from diverse communities, because like I already mentioned, when it comes to ethics, it depends on the context and different people have different views about the same thing. And so it's important that once we bring in the diverse communities, people in bring in different perspectives. So you just don't think directly at your own perspective. You're able to bring different perspectives on board. And um, a good um, um, resource we mentioned for this was the Coded Bias uh, movie. I think on Netflix, um, we think it's a great resource to point out to algorithmic um, bias in AI. And then uh, we also mentioned the nurturing approach, which is practically good for usually primary school um, or lower level students. And so as a matter of fact, where do we actually have to be as a continent in teaching AI ethics? So first of all, it is undebatable that teaching AI ethics in, um, in, in universities, in higher education, it's important. And we need to ensure that at least all students take courses in AI ethics. And it's as a matter of urgency. Um, AI ethics should be compulsory and there's no doubt about that. And this is where we think we should be already. And secondly, um, we should be at a point where students already have a fostering AI ethics mindset. So once any student is working with a data set that involves building AI tools, the thing that should be at the back of your mind should be how ethical is what I'm developing. That should always be at the foresight of every particular student. And thirdly, um, first of all, understanding AI ethics differ from person to person to some extent. And so whilst we are introducing teaching AI ethics, we shouldn't just um, look at one particular direction. We should think about bringing in diverse teams of instructors. So we can think about lawyers, we can think about philosophers, developers, everyone is involved. So everyone's perspective is brought in. So when we, these are introduced, we should ensure that we have a diverse team of instructors. And then finally, we think that 
higher education should have instituted multiple ways of teaching AI ethics to future generations. So it shouldn't be just one way in teaching AI ethics. There should be different ways in which you instill in learners AI ethics as a particular important concept when it comes to AI. So overall, our chapter expanded on um, several guiding principles of AI ethics. We also highlighted the ethical challenges that can exist in different domains when um, developing AI systems. Um, we also um, explained some um, bias, for instance, whilst you're selecting um, a sample to build your data set, um, how selection of that sample could also lead to different form of bias, like selected bias. So these, all of these things that I have mentioned, we expanded this in the, in, the, in the book chapter. And I hope that once you have a copy of the book, uh, um, you take time to read all of these and then get more perspectives on, on this. And so this was what we um, worked on for our chapter. So over to you, um, Kathleen, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Deborah. Um, I think, um, building off of, of some of what you talked about and going back to the the reports that Philip mentioned, like the the global, the more global guidelines and the African blueprint, uh, the AI blueprint for Africa. Did I, I haven't had a chance to look at those those closely, but do they do they look uh, fundamentally or in or in very distinct ways different than some of the guidelines we've seen heavily dominated by by Europe or the U.S. Um, are there things maybe in addition to what Deborah said that stand out um, that make it Africa a distinct context in which we have to think about AI ethics? Mm -hmm. So that's a good question. So I think the most important, what sets the blueprint apart by Smart Africa is the process and how it was developed. So that if you look at the global partnership on artificial intelligence, if you look at the OECD AI principles or the G20 principles, which are also oriented towards the OECD, that they are, well, mostly driven by industrialized um, nations, which also house now the yeah, commercial powerhouses of AI. Think Facebook, think Google, um, and those interests are, um, yeah, are also represented in those kind of principles. When you think of the AI blueprint for Africa that was now developed um, with the Smart Africa Alliance, it was a multi-stakeholder process that included uh, different African governments and um, yeah, companies and universities and also international organizations like the World Bank, for example. So um, the yeah, development process, I guess, that is the main difference. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the similar principles are raised um, like transparency and accountability and fairness uh, the importance of open training data set to develop uh, artificial intelligence but i guess it's um yeah it, a different weighing of relevance and importance mm. i also think of I, we don't have anyone from that section here today but we have we have two chapters on kind of the more theoretical philosophical underpinnings and what comes up a lot is this ubuntu um kind of community prioritization that you don't see in in europe or the us as much and how does that actually factor in to how we think about the ethics of a tool when we value maybe the the community well-being over individual well-being i don't know if anyone anyone welcome to jump in on that um yeah. no i think i i want to agree with that assertion because when you look at the whole topic of ethics and you look at AI and the ethical dimensions of it, especially within the African context, it is important that we look at it from a cultural perspective. And uh, when it comes to ethics, these are accepted norms and practices within uh, the community. And that is why I even find the connection that Deborah makes to religion as very instructive because you cannot talk about ethics without uh, looking at the background from where the person is coming up, uh, from. So in looking at the whole context of ethics as it applies to the environment, it is important that we look at it within the context of 
what the community accepts to be good as far as the application of AI is concerned as against the individual perspective, as in having developed a solution and thinking that it is okay, it must be looked at within the context of, is it for the good of the entire community or we are looking at it within the context of only particular individuals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, first of all, also anyone else in the audience, feel free to throw a question in the chat or something like that if you have um, something to say, but Deborah, go ahead. Yeah, so I just wanted to throw uh, more highlights um, with regards to this. Um, so for, for instance, uh, here in, in, in Europe, it looks like, um, I mean, a child has some form of rights, right? So assuming you're uncomfortable with how your, your parents talk to you, you can tell them, hey, mommy, hey, daddy, what you're doing, it's wrong, I'm not happy with it, I'm not okay with this form of treatment and all of that. But coming back to where I grew up from, a child has no say. Um, for instance, assuming your mom's friend comes in, as a child, technically, you should excuse them and let adults talk. And there are some conversations that, as a child, you don't have to what, partake in. They tell you that this is an adult conversation. And these are things that we have grown up with, and we accept that this is a norm. And so, Assuming you're building an AI ethic, coming to AI context too as well, if you're coming up with AI ethics and or teaching AI ethics and then or a curriculum for AI ethics, and this is done just based on a particular context, this context is based on what they see to be normal. Now, carrying this and adopting it just to maybe an African context wouldn't work because everything would seem new to me. So just like the example I used, in the family setting, a child has no rule. But then because this ethics has been designed based on this context, they bring it with the mindset that a child has a right, a child can say something. So it wouldn't fit into that context. And I think that's one thing why we highlighted in our work that it's important to have a diverse community. This is pretty important. We need diversity when it comes to teaching ethics. Even in, in Ghana, just Ghana as a whole, I know that when you move from Ghana to a different African country, things are different. Cultural things differ, religion differ. So it's important that we always, whatever we are doing when it comes to ethics, we look at which scenario, which context are we looking at, which community are we looking at, and design these things to actually suit that particular context, and these would work pretty well. So it's very important. I can't stop highlighting how important it is to always include diversity in when it comes to ethics, because it's really a very delicate topic. Yeah, and I think, I mean, we're talking about how ethics is already kind of a hard sell to a yeah. computer science program. And then they see the guidelines and they're like, this doesn't even apply to me. Like I can't even identify with it. Um, I'm definitely not gonna put it in my lecture or, or it, you know, in my boardroom or, or whatever context. Right. Leticia, did you have something okay. to add? Okay, uh, just to add to what uh, Deborah has said, there's actually need for diversity when it comes to ethics. Because in Nigeria, for example, you know, what works for African, other African countries may not work for Nigeria. So when we're developing, when we're developing this ethics, there's need for us to look at, to bring it in the, that, to look at it in different areas. So it should be, just like she said, there should be diversity so that it can suit the purpose for which it was created. For example, you know, when you want, when you want to uh, use data sets, for example, to develop systems, you know, most times in Africa, we, we normally source for our data sets externally to develop, uh, uh, to develop our systems. But there's need for us to create our own data sets within the African context to suit our own problems. So the same thing should apply to ethics. It should suit the African uh, uh, context, African belief, we want to bring in ethics into AI. Thank you. Uh, if I can throw in, uh, there are two things actually I want to throw in. I want to contribute once again to the issue about ethics within a cultural context. And then we'll come back to integrating AI within the uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, the, the issue about uh, ethics as it situates itself within a cultural context, uh, it is also important that as much as it is important to accommodate diversity, uh, it creates an open-ended question which makes it difficult to have closure 
as far as how far you can go is concerned. What I'm saying here is that, okay, so we want to look at ethics as it applies to AI. We want to look at it within the Ghanaian context. If you go across the border and you are in, let's say Togo, you go into Burkina, you also want to look at it within their own context. Uh, the question then comes, um, how far do we go and how diverse can it be? Doesn't it come to a point where there is a convergence where we can say that, okay, good is good and bad is bad, irrespective of where you find uh, your, 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 yourself? Well, wouldn't we be exposing ourselves too much when we say that, okay, let it be within a certain context, which means that if I develop a solution in Germany, it is not applicable when it comes to the Ghanaian uh, case. At what point do we say, okay, this is sufficient diversity as far as uh, developing the solution is concerned. Yeah, I think uh, in our in our talk yesterday, um, I forget if it was Eric or Christian made made this point too that in in terms of uh, relatedly the regulatory framework, right? Uh, you have a lot of smaller African countries that they each have their own regulatory framework. How is any app going to come in there and be able to navigate them all, right? So is there some sort of convergence that has to happen just to make things manageable or to allow companies to operate on their tools. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that is something we should look at. Now coming back to integrating uh, AI ethics into the curriculum. Uh, I think listening to Leticia, uh, I don't hear a lot talked about with reference to the faculty members themselves, the academic institutions themselves. What I know about introducing new courses is that it must always originate from the department. It must always originate from the faculty themselves. So it is more of a, a bottom up approach rather than looking at it from the regulator at the national level and then bringing it down to the various universities. All I'm saying is that if indeed we will succeed in integrating ethics in AI into the curriculum, it is important that heads of departments, deans of faculties, lecturers who teach these courses within the various universities have an understanding and appreciation of how important it is to integrate ethics into the curriculum. It is then that they now will be able to put courses together that can be brought for the attention of the regulator, NUC, in the case of Nigeria. If we don't do that and we have, uh, the, we have the, the, the courses accepted at the uh, national level and we bring it down for the various departments and faculty members to run with, in the end, we will fail. All I'm saying is that let us educate, let us conscientize people who teach AI as to how important it is to integrate ethics in it so that when those who are teaching the students have an understanding of it, they themselves will pick it up and then push it from that angle. So I am happy that you want to do a conference. It is important that we do sufficient education so that practitioners and then academic institutions who front AI will recognize how important it is to incorporate the ethics dimension, and then they will now develop programs that can be pushed through the accreditation processes. I don't know what you think about this, Leticia. Okay, thank you for that. No, that's just to respond to what you have said. Mm -hmm. You know, actually the courses comes from NUC, that the departments, the outlines, the curriculum actually comes from there. We are not saying that you cannot integrate ethics into AI, since AI is already in existence. We can do that. But the question now is, is there enough time within that short semester? Because the semester can be maybe for two months or three months. So that cost alone to integrate ethics into AI within that short period will not actually be enough for us to achieve much. So that's actually the, the, the angle I'm going to. So it does not mean that it cannot be done. It can be done actually, but will you be able to achieve much within short that uh, that uh, short period? You may not be able to achieve much. I know most times the lecturers 
you know, they find it difficult to maybe to change their, their, their courses, the, 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 the modules that they have already developed for a particular course. So most of them, even if you try to explain to them, they need for us to do what? To integrate things into AI, into the module that we already have that is existing. They'll find it difficult to do that. That is why I'm now calling for the need for us to have AI as a program, John like have computer science as a program, other faculties, as a, other departments, under uh, different faculties, under uh, the faculty of science as a program. If we can have AI as a program, it will go a long way to help us to integrate ethics into it and other things that it takes, okay, into that program. So, for example, there's they say uh, we have a, a faculty has approved has been approved for for, for computer science department. So, in the University of Potaco right now, we have a faculty of computing. For it's a faculty of, of, of computing which is a, which uh, which includes computer science, information technology, and cyber security. So, we are trying to see how we can also include artificial intelligence because they actually gave us so, four departments from NUC. Software engineer was also included, but they don't drop software engineering. So I want to see how we can integrate and bring in AI as a program. So I'm not saying that you cannot say, talk about artificial intelligence, but how many people are, so that's just uh, what, what I'm trying to say, departmental level, and they send it to NUC. They will offer because what they are doing is just the minimum benchmark. That does not mean that you cannot include. You can include, but you cannot create programs. They have to approve before you can go to do or to create programs. Thank you. Thanks, the teacher. We, we, your video went in a little bit and out there, but I think uh, we heard most of almost everything you said. Um, okay. Did you hear me well? Yeah, <laughs> we can hear you. Your video is just going a little. Okay, so, the network. No problem. Not about that, the network. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of reminds me a lot of, I mean, we hear this complaint in when we talk, when I've talked to people more in industry that um, they, they live in such a fast paced, busy environment, you know, to think about the logistics of actually putting AI ethics into their daily, like things they have to do. It's like, I would never have time to even have that what about question and that um, even though it's so necessary, it's like logistically how do you even make time for that in your already so demanding competitive um, schedule? Uh, I, we just have a few more minutes. I wanted to ask one more kind of type of question. We saw, uh, we talked a lot about diversity. And uh, if you saw some of the panel yesterday um, on diversity, one of the things our, our colleague Tara from Technovation was talking about was really that uh, in order to get AI ethics and ethical responsible AI into the products we're seeing, um, you need the right voices in the room, right? When that product is being developed um, mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, we talked about gender, we talked about minorities, we talked about disabilities, we talked about all types of, of people that need to be present that, but getting into that room is not magic, right? Um, her whole program is about starting girls off young, not in higher education, even younger than that, um, you know, primary school, thinking about these topics, thinking about getting interested in things like AI and technology. Is there, is there something we're missing when we just are starting, although it's incredibly important, starting in higher education, that we're missing not starting earlier, maybe, because a big part of that kind of ethics is getting all the people actually in the room who can talk about these issues. Mm. If I can start, you know, I think that a spot on and uh, we are really coming to the party a bit late and it's important that if we really want to impact on actually incorporating ethics in artificial intelligence we need to go lower than the higher education level and see how we can influence the way our children think as they grow up these days, children spend a lot of time with computer games and then with their tablets and all that. Consciously, it is important that programmers of games and programmers of cartoons and the rest consciously begin to work in how ethics can be incorporated into the little things that children play with. These days, children do a lot of learning by playing and playing with a computer, playing with tablets, playing with phones. I will want to suggest that to make impact, we begin to influence 
the next generation by incorporating ethics in the things that they play with as far as their education is concerned. That will be my, my take as far as this is concerned. Great. Maybe in our last four minutes, everyone can just take one minute each and, and respond to this or anything else about the panel. Okay. Um, maybe I'll just pick it up from where um, Jerry spoke. So yeah, I think I do agree with the point that now we have what we call computer children. And so you find them a little, even as um, early as five years can pick um, a phone and be able to manipulate the way through, find games and download them. And so um, we have the saying that train a child the way he or she should grow so that when he grows, he would never depart from it. And so I think it's really important that we start as far as they are young. And so how do we instill that in them? We know that they love um, games. And so once you're developing games, like um, Jerry said, you try to incorporate all of these things in so that whilst they're growing up, they know that whatever you do is important that you always ask what I'm doing. Does, does this make sense? Does this thing to affect someone? Like, what is ethical about what I'm doing, all of that. And I just wanted to add something um, per the earlier discussion between um, Jerry and um, Leticia with regards to um, about um, introducing AI ethics and whether the faculty should start these programs and all of that. I think another important part of it that we need to conscientize is our respective country governments. I think that um, each most, for instance, I know in Europe, there, they have like um, research grants that they give to institutions or um, university professors who um, they're interested in um, pursuing or pushing an agenda towards a particular research domain. And so I think that once our country government should also begin looking at the fact that AI has come to stay. And as it has come to say, it's important that we begin to also push in funds into researching into the area of ethics. And by doing so, once you push in funds into research institutions, university professors themselves would pick these up and begin doing more research upon that, um, training more uh, um, um, students in this area. And at the end of it, would help find solutions to these problems. So that's um, something I wanted to mention as well. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, quickly from Leticia, yeah. Thank you. Just to add to what uh, both of them have said, it's always good to start early, you know, from the primary age, because these children of these days actually, you know, they are computer age children, so most of them know how to use phone, just like he said. They know how to use phone, they know how to manipulate it. So it's better to even start at that primary level before they get to tertiary, then university level. You are it is, we're even starting late. Find out that in Africa now, right now, when you're talking of ethics of uh, ethics of AI. Most people will, will, will don't even understand what you mean by ethics of AI because I discovered that when I did my survey. So it's very good we, we start from the primary level before we now get to the uh, tertiary level. Then another important thing at that tertiary level, just like I said, conferences and webinars is very important. If you can organize conferences, also, that is where you can also you know, let people know what is actually, actually happening out there. So that's how you can integrate these uh, ethics into it and let people know what is happening so that they also be part of ethics and AI. Thank you. Thanks so much. And Philip and Kupu, if you have any last comments. Yeah, thank you, Caitlin. Um, yeah, I think this limited diversity in computer science, math, engineering, technology is, uh, I mean, it applies across different cultural contexts. And this is really a systematic problem that certainly needs to be addressed on a whole lot of levels, but including higher education. And this is why I think um, that this book is part of this effort you know, to contribute to this uh, diversity. And it's also more than an academic book, I think. I mean, it also becomes clear in the book and also in the panel here that this is not only a contribution to the academic debate, but people are really passionate about putting this into practice in um, lecturing, in their teaching. And that's why I'm very much looking forward actually to the, to the publication of the book and to many, many further debates in, in this group and beyond. Thank you so much. I think that's a great note to end it on. And uh, I hope you all stay tuned uh, for our book, which will be open access. We forgot to mention that. So it'll be readily available to anyone interested. Um, and we'll be announcing it over the Responsible AI Network, Africa Network, as well as the IAI. Um, so uh, tune in for that. Thank you all so much. Um, and we're finished just about on time. So uh, have a nice rest of the conference.